useful agents, agent AI, that will go out onto the internet and complete tasks for you on your behalf. So you're booking a holiday, you uh, have an agent that will go and they know, that agent knows what hotels you like to stay in. You know, you like, let's say you like eco-tourism. They, and it, it knows exactly what you want. That's what Angentic, that's the kind of decision making that agents will be doing for us. And it's coming very, very quickly. Now the caveat around generative AI search is that these models don't actually know if, if what they're telling you is true. They are regurgitating the internet. They're predicting the next word in a sentence to fill the gaps. So you don't know, always, if the answers you get from generative AI search are, are correct. And that is, of course, a big concern and a big risk for all of us. The second technology I'm going to talk about is small language models. So you've heard about large language models. That's what most of what we're talking about with AI. Small language models are growing in importance. They do not use as much training data, that's why they're small. Uh, they don't use as many parameters in the models. Because they use fewer parameters and they're smaller, they're, they're less expensive to create and to run, they're more efficient, they produce fewer emissions. Olhando um pouquinho mais amplo, né? É, inclusão digital é o essencial hoje para o mundo. O Brasil mesmo tem uma, um país muito heterogêneo. So it's reaching people who are poor, who live in or who might live in remote places, or who might not who might not be able-bodied, disabled in some fashion. Um, and it also means sharing the opportunities that digital technologies create. Uh, so the first step in that is connectivity. Beyond connectivity, there is more investment going into digital public infrastructure that can spread the digital economy far and wide. Um, that's systems for digital ID, digital payments, data exchange. 